Welcome to my very first uh, recorded class. Um, this is kind of a little bit of an experiment. I want to uh, start recording my classes and I'm going to put them up on YouTube um, kind of as a library for myself um, but also for you to um, be able to follow along at home. Um, if it means you can't get into studio, into, into um, class, you can practice from home. So bear with me, um, this is my first one. So the camera is a little bit intimidating for me, but um, we'll see how it goes. So today's class is focused around drag and squat, um, which is a pretty um, like difficult skill, but there are lots of places that we can stop at along the way and play and explore and strengthen and mobilize. Um, so if you do have a block, it will be handy, but not necessary. If you don't have one, don't stress. We're only going to use it for a little uh, piece at the start of the practice. Okay, so let's do this. Coming onto your mat, we're going to start on our back and taking a reclined butterfly shape. So coming onto your back, bringing the soles of the feet together and the knees out wide. <coughs> have your block somewhere handy so you can grab it soon we're not going to use it straight away soles of the feet together knees wide arms out beside you palms facing up towards the sky you can take a little rock of your head side to side here just take a moment to get comfortable start to allow gravity to draw your knees away from one another feel them sinking down towards the earth just noticing the muscles across your lower back throughout your hips, just giving them permission to surrender, to let go. So our dragon squat comprises of quite a lot of balance. And so we're thinking about balance this morning in our practice. And there's a quote by Rumi that I really like that says, balance is the practice of knowing when to hold on and knowing when to surrender. We're just going to begin together this morning by finding three full breaths. So as you next breathe through your nose and that breath into the belly, let it grow your belly. And then open your mouth as you exhale, releasing that breath out. With your next breath in, send it down into the belly and then let it grow up and outwards into your ribs. And then opening mouth, sticking out tongue perhaps. Last one together, breathing deep into the belly, into the ribs, and then send that breath right up into the chest space. Let it fully expand your collarbones. And then open mouth and release. Good, from here start to welcome some little movements into your fingers and your toes. We're gonna gather the knees together and then draw the knees into the chest. Wrap your hands around your shins, give yourself a squeeze here. Maybe start to find a gentle little rock left to right. And then come into center. We're gonna peel head, neck and shoulders from the mat as we reach the forehead all the way up towards the knees. Exhale, slowly release back down. Two more, inhale, squeeze in, start to feel the core activating. Exhale, lower back down, one more time. Inhale as you pull up, squeeze. Good, and then exhale, lower down. From here, we're gonna take our block. I've left it way too far away from myself. <laughs> Holding onto your block, we're gonna place it between our knees. Bring your knees over your hips, your shins, your calves are parallel to the earth beside you, arms on the side of the body to begin. So start to really feel as you squeeze that block between the inner thighs. We want to start to activate these adductor muscles in the inner thighs. They work to pull the legs towards the midline of the body. So we're pressing that block as firmly as we can, like you want to crush it. As you inhale, we're going to reach the hands forwards, pull the head, neck and shoulders from the mat. Good. And then exhale, lower back down. 
down. Inhale as you squeeze up, keep compressing that block. Exhale, lower back down one more time. Inhale, squeeze up and hold. Good, squeeze through the midline of the body. From here, keep that compression through the block, straighten the legs. Good, exhale, bend the knees, straighten the legs. Bend the knees. We're going to go for another three. Keep that pressure on the block. Another two. Keep lifting the shoulders. Last one. Hold. Five, four. Keep lifting high. Three, two, one. One, beautiful, and release knees to chest. We're going to get rid of the block now. We won't need it again. Taking the knees into the chest, arms out wide to a T, and we're going to roll over to our left side. Gaze to the right fingers, just soften through your lower back. And then breathing in, come back into centre. Knees over to the other side, gaze to the opposite fingers. Good. As you breathe in, come back into centre. We're going to start to rock and roll now up and down the spine. Just enjoy the massage. Have a little play backwards and forwards. And we're going to meet on hands and knees. When you're ready, taking a roll over your knees as you come all the way forwards. So finding that hands, tabletop position, wrists are under your shoulders, knees are under your hips, cat cow, breathing in belly low, lift the tail and the crown as you gaze high and then exhale, breathing out as you press away. And just start to move yourself through a few rounds of your cat cow. You can get creative here. You can bring circles into your hips. You can circle through your shoulders. You can find more of like a figure eight. Just start to bring some fluidity across your spine, across your hips. As we start to feel into the body and notice where it is today, notice what it needs. Feeling into those sticky spots. Good. And then we're gonna come into uh, stillness, tabletop position. Tuck under your toes, press into your hands firmly and feel that protraction of your shoulder blades. So your shoulder blades are pulling away from each other. And then we're gonna lift the knees from the mat so that they hover. So they're just a centimeter or so above the mats, not a lot. Set the core, start to feel the strength of your legs, your quads engaging. We're gonna take left hand, tap the right shoulder. And now the right leg is going to kick out to the side. Good. Keep your body weight low to the mat. Left hand comes back down. Right hand finds your left shoulder. Kick the left leg out to the side. Good. We're going to move through that a couple more times. Might take a couple of rounds to get the rhythm of it. Try to move controlled here. Try to keep the weight in your hands. Keep lifting the legs high. Let's go one more each side. Each time the knees come back to hover, beautiful. Coming back into center, knees find the mat. We're gonna anchor down into the left hand, inhale your right arm to the sky, follow with the gaze. Exhale, thread the needle through, bring that right arm under the left. Twice more, inhale as you peel open, rotate. Exhale, thread through. Last one. Breathe in, find that expansion through your chest. And then as you exhale, thread through, we're gonna pause here. So we're bringing the cheek all the way down to the mat. We're gonna keep the left hand here for the moment as we kick that left foot out to the side. So we're anchoring it down onto the ground. From here, that left hand can reach up to the sky. Maybe it stays, maybe it moves behind and binds. We're gonna pivot on the bottom knee. So swing that right foot in line with your left foot. And now you've got yourself a kind of a little of a kickstand here so you can roll your chest open towards the sky a little more. Send the breath into that right shoulder. Good, take one more full inhale, full exhale. We're gonna take the top hand back to the mat. Keep the legs as they are. As you inhale, peel right hand back to the sky. Exhale, hand to the mat. We're gonna sit back onto our sitting bones here. Hands reach high. Left hand catches that extended leg. Good, nice big side stretch. Feel that right shoulder peel open. From here, top hand circles in front, flash dance. You're gonna slide your right hand behind you. Press your hips forwards. 
Good, breathe into the opening of the chest. Exhale, hips lower down. Slide the hands out in front and then pivot again on that right knee so that it's in line with the long edge of the mat. So we're in this gate pose shape here. We're just gonna rock ourselves backwards and forwards. Starting to feel an opening through that inner left thigh. You can rock fast, you can rock slow. You can come deep, you can stay high. Just feel it out. Good. And then coming into center. Get strong and steady through your arms once more. Feel the protraction through your shoulders. Feel as you press your hands firmly into the mat. Fire up your core. Squeeze your left glute. We're going to hover that left leg. Good. Lift it up. With control, sweep it behind. Tap the earth on the right side of your body. Reach it as far around as you can. Good. Lift it high. Bring it all the way back to the left. As far forwards as you can, tap the earth. Press it back. Tap the earth on the right. Good, a couple more. As far as you can to the left. And now as far as you can to the right, pause. Little pulses here up and down with that extended leg. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, from there, land it down. Land the knee down. We're gonna sink back into our cow pose. So the right leg is crossing over the leg here. We're gonna take the left hand catch the top knee, right hand reaches up towards the sky. So you're spinning and rotating towards that top knee. And then we're gonna sink the weight over the leg. So the further you pull yourself over your knees here, the more of a bite and a grab, you're gonna feel into that right glute. This is a really delicious piriformis opener. Good, take one more breath here. Beautiful. Come back into center. Taking a little twist over to the other side. Hands come to the mat. We're gonna press up onto the feet. If you come to my class, you know that I love doing this. We're gonna spin all the way around to the front of the mat. Step the feet together, right foot forwards for a pyramid shape. So both legs are straight here. Train track alignment. So bringing the feet on opposite planes. And then we're just taking a rock here backwards and forwards. You can lift and lower the toes. Just starting to get some movement through the hamstring, through the calf. Good. Take one more breath here. We're going to anchor down into the hands now. Standing split. Fly the left leg up towards the sky. Feel your left glute working hard to lift that leg high. From there, we're coming into that adductor strength again. So we're gonna take the top leg, send it over to the right side, and then bring it as far forwards as you can. Bring it back behind you. Over to the right, sweep it forwards. Bring it back, that inner thigh should really be starting to talk to you. Bring it back, last one. Sweep it forwards, little pulses up and down. Five, four, three, two, and one, beautiful. Step the feet together now. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale to fold, we're coming into a chair, Utkatasana, sit deep. When you come into your chair here this morning, today, tonight, whatever time it is to you where you're watching this, I want you to think about today pressing the knees away from one another. So pull the knees out to the sides. Start to feel the activation in your glutes here. Feel the stability that that creates for you. From here as you inhale, we're gonna press up halfway. Exhale, sink back down. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, sink down. Keep pressing knees apart, one more. Good, exhale down. Inhale all the way up to standing. Release your hands to your sides. Close over your eyes, Tadasana. Just take a moment to find yourself. Feel your heart as it moves inside of your chest. Feel the rhythm of your breath. See if you can consciously slow it down. Start to find a little rock on the soles of your feet. Send the weight into the toes and then the heels. Toes and heels. The challenge is to have your eyes closed, but maybe you're cracking them open. Good, come into stillness. We're gonna experiment with our balance. Waiting down into the right foot. See if you can lift the left foot. 
Don't worry so much about what that left leg is doing. We're just focusing on the balance on the right foot. Challenge again is to keep eyes closed, but if you need to crack them open, do so. Maybe you're just pressing up and off of that big toe. Good, come back into center, other side. Send the weight into the left foot, start to play with lifting the right. Know that if you fall, it's okay. The ground will catch you. Falling is all about learning. We have to fall, we have to fail in order to learn, in order to explore our edges, in order to push our boundaries. Good. Come back into centre, both feet to the mat. As you inhale, circle your arms overhead, grow nice and tall. Then as you exhale, take a swan dive down to your forward fold. Halfway lift, breathe your heart forwards. Exhale, plant your hands. We're going to step to downward facing dog. First down dog of the practice. Take a moment to walk it out. Pedal through your legs. Maybe a sway of your hips. From there, we'll come into stillness. Take the gaze to the fingers, fingers, ripple forwards, high plank. We're going to pause here. Bend your knees so that they hover and then shift the weight back into your downward facing dog. Couple more, inhale, ripple. Bend the knees, shift back. So starting to create this wave-like motion through your whole body. Feel the spine fluid like water. Good, last one. Shift forwards. This time we're gonna end in a child's pose. Bring your knees all the way down. Send your sitting bones back and your hands forwards. Take a moment of pause and surrender. Just let yourself be. Notice what's happening internally. Notice your breath. Notice your thoughts. Notice how you're feeling. Let's take a clearing breath together. We're gonna to breathe deep and full, swell the belly. Open your mouth and let it out. Here we go, gazes forwards. We're gonna press back to hands and knees. Good, come back into that quadruped position. So we're gonna to tuck toes under, hover knees. Press into the hands, feel the shoulders pull away from one another. Right hand finds the left shoulder, left foot kicks out to the side. Try to keep yourself nice and low. Left hand, right shoulder, right foot extends. Good, keep shifting side to side. Try to make the movement fluid, controlled. Feel the strength in your shoulders. Feel the strength in your quads, the fronts of your thighs. Let's go one more each side. Beautiful. Come back into center, knees to the mat. This time we're gonna anchor down through that right hand. Left hand peels open. Exhale, thread the needle through. Inhale, peel open, really rotate. Look to the top fingers. Exhale, thread through. Last one. Exhale, thread through and pause. So I'm gonna stay with my back to you so you can get this from another angle. So our left cheek is to the mat. We're gonna take the right foot out to the side, let it land. Option to keep this hand on the ground for support, option to raise it to the sky, or maybe you're gonna bind. From here, we're gonna pivot on our bottom knee, on our left knee, sweep our left foot in line with our right. And then from there, you've created yourself a little base so you can start to roll even further onto the backside of your head, really peeling open and twisting through the top part of your spine. Let's take one more breath. Good. Start to roll back to center. Keep the legs as they are. Return the right hand to the mat. Peel that left hand back towards the sky. And then on your exhale, left hand to the mat, we're gonna sit back onto our sitting bones. So that left knee stays bent into the groin. Right hand catches the extended leg as we hinge over that long leg. Good, rainbow the side of the body, peel the top shoulder to the sun. We're gonna take the top hand now, circle it out in front. Sweep it behind for our flash dance. Press up onto your shin, hips press forwards. 
Good, as you exhale, releasing your sitting bones back to the mat, we're gonna slide the hands forwards, shift over that left knee, and then just pivot again. So we're in this gate pose variation. I might do it this way to the camera so you've got a bit of a better angle. From here, we're just shifting the weight backwards and forwards. So you can come all the way back or maybe you're just kind of coming halfway, wherever it feels good for you. You should be feeling a nice big opening through the inside of your right thigh right up into the groin good couple more beautiful from there come back to center press into your hands firmly start to feel that support through your shoulders and your core fire up through your right glute and then see if you can hover that right leg from the mat from there, we're gonna sweep it behind, over to the left side and tap the earth. Bring it forwards as far as you can. Lift it, send it back, tap the earth to the right. Here we go, backwards and forwards. That inner thigh, the adductors should start to talk to you here. Good, let's go one more. And then the next time you bring it to the left side, we're gonna pause. Pulses up and down, five, four, three, two, and one, beautiful. From there, land the knee, sit back into your cow shape. Sink the weight back. Right hand now catches that top knee, left hand to the sky. So we're rotating towards the top leg, and then we're gonna start to send the weight forwards. Feel the weight in that foot, feel the opening of the ankle, and then feel your left glute. Good morning. <laughs> I'm gonna spin back on my mat so I'm in line with you. From there, take a little counter twist over to the right side. Plan your hands down. Press up onto your feet. Take a little walk around to the front of the mat. Unravel your feet, pyramid pose, left foot steps in front. Start to rock here, backwards and forwards. Good. And then standing split when you're ready, flying through that back leg. You can play with your standing split. Maybe you're starting to walk your hands closer to that standing leg. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two. Play with your balance. From here, that top foot is gonna tap the earth over to the left side. Bring it as far forwards as you can. Send it back behind you. Another two, bring it forwards. Send it back. Last one, sweep it forwards and hold. Pulse up and down, five, four, three, two, one. Well done, back behind you. Land the feet in line with each other. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold, find your chair, Utkatasana. So in our chair, traditionally we're instructed to bring toes together and knees apart. Personally, I don't like that. I like to bring my feet to be hip distance. I feel like I get more balance there, but do what works for you. This time we wanna feel like we're pulling knees away from one another so that we can set the strength up through our glutes. Keep pressing knees apart as you inhale halfway. Exhale, sit deep. Inhale, exhale, one more. Good. This time rising all the way up to standing. We're gonna interlace the fingers at the top here. Grow nice and tall. Step that right foot behind over to the left side. Send the weight over to the left and then we're gonna drop that bottom knee down to the mat. Good, lift it up. One more time. You can bring your hands down for support if that feels better. Lift tall. It's back into center. Left foot steps behind. Hinge to the right. Sink down into that bottom knee. Stand tall. One more. Good, stand tall. Feet back together. Exhale as you swan dive to your forward fold. Halfway lift. Plant your hands, step into downward facing. Pedal and sway, take a moment here. Gaze to your fingers and ripple through high plank. Here we go again, bend the knees, hover, shift them back. Find that fluidity, that dance and rhythm of your spine. Good, and then the next time you come forwards, knees to the mat for child's pose. All the way down. 
And just take your time in your child's pose. Catch your breath. Practicing slowing it back down. Inviting yourself back into balance. So this practice of balance isn't something that we just find one day. It's not something that we just one day wake up with. It's something that you create. And it's something that you continue to create each and every day. Let's take a big, delicious breath together here. Swell your belly. Open your mouth, stick out your tongue. Let it out. Good, we're gonna to come to meet in a downward facing dog. And then we're gonna continue on from your downward facing dog. Bring the feet together at the back of your mat and we're gonna fly the right leg to the sky. As you exhale, knee to chest, squeeze the knee up as high as you can as you shift the weight forwards. Inhale, take that leg back. Exhale, knee to chest, squeeze in and shift forwards. One more time, inhale back. Exhale, knee to chest, compress, lift the knee high. Good, take it back to your three-legged dog, pause. Twisted dog, stack your hips. Bend your top knee. You might stay here, this might be plenty. Wild thing if you would like it, you're gonna pivot slow on the ball of that foot as you land the top foot to the mat beside you. We're thinking about straightening our left leg as we bend our right knee, lift your hips and your heart to the sky. Feel that expansion through the top of the body. Beautiful. With just as much grace, move yourself back through to your three-legged dog. Right leg extends behind. From here, fall and triangle. Take the right knee to the left armpit. We're gonna kick it out to the side, land it down, left hand to the sky. Fall and triangle. This next one's a little bit funky. We're gonna start by bending the bottom knee, bringing the shin to the mat, in line with your wrist, Oop, I'm falling over. <laughs> From here, we wanna press the bottom foot in front of our top thigh, and then bring that bottom knee to the elbow. Press the foot to the sky, bottom knee to elbow for three. Left adductor should be working for two, and one. From there, Come to a seat. So you're facing the back of the mat. Right knee is bent. We're gonna keep rolling over to the other side. Step the right foot over the left and come up onto that left forearm. Think about pushing your top hip down towards your back heel. Pull the toes on the extended leg to the face. Lift the bottom leg. Lift and lower, five. Four, you can support yourself with your top hand. Three, two, one more, lift it up and hold, 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 and release. Good, bend the bottom knee, press yourself up to a seat. Here we are again in our cow shape. Left hand is gonna catch the top knee, right hand to the sky. Send the weight over the legs. The more you pull on that top leg, the more you're gonna feel that in the right glute. Beautiful. Whew, I'm sweating, it's hot here. <laughs> Come back into, into center, counter twist over to the left, and then we're just gonna pivot back to the front of the mat. So pyramid pose again, right foot is forwards. If you're not at the back of your mat, just take a little step, a little shimmy so that you are. We're just gonna be in a short pyramid shape. Little rock again, backwards and forwards. From there, standing split, left leg reaches up towards the sky. Lift it high. 
We're going to play with some pistol squats now. So you've got options. <laughs> Option one is we start with Shiva. Left knee finds the back of the right knee and maybe you stay there. Lift and lower as you tap the knees. Option two is you're going to bring the knee a little closer in towards the chest and start to bend into that right knee. So just finding a little more depth. There's a lot of compression, a lot of core. Option three is the full, full shebang. So we're going to bring the knee into the chest, lift it high, bend into the right knee a lot, come all the way into a squat and then shoot the left foot forwards. Bring yourself back. If you've got access to a couple of blocks here, it can be handy to put your hands on your blocks to give yourself some more uh, space to work with. So find your option. We're going to go for another three. Whew. Another two. Last one. <laughs> this time, wherever you are, see if you can come all the way through. So if you need to just bring that foot down, send it out in front so that we all meet in our pistol squat. That foot can be on the ground. Your hands can be on blocks. Or you're playing with hovering the leg, finding your balance. Three, two, one. Land the foot. Slide forwards to low lunge. So that right knee comes down, left foot to the mat, rise up to low lunge. Tuck the back toes, high lunge, up we go. From your high lunge, skandasana to the back of the mat. Bend into the right knee. You can come low, you can stay high. Your choice, other side. You can use your hands on the mat. We're just going to flow through Skandasana a couple of times, left to right, right to left. Beautiful. The next time you come to the front of the mat, pivot, arrowhead, hover the arms, hover the belly, sink deep into that front knee. As you breathe in, reach your hands ahead. Bend deeply into your front knee and sink that knee over the toes. It's okay to bring your knees over your toes, sink forwards. As you breathe in, send the weight back, pyramid pose. Hands can come to the mat or they can hover along the sides of your body as you play with balance. Inhale forwards, send the knee over the toes, reach the hands. Exhale back, uh, our <laughs> pyramid pose. One more time. Good, sink back. From your pyramid, hands come to frame that front foot. Just pull the foot back a little closer to your body so you can come into a standing split. Right leg to the sky. From your standing split, this time we're going to bend the top knee, bring the thighs to touch as you think about pulling the knee around the outer left side of that leg. Straighten the leg off. Bend the knee. Sink down as you pull that leg to the side. We'll go one more time. Sink down, pull the knee as far forwards as you can. Beautiful, stand back up. Feet come to touch. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Rise up to standing. Woof. Hands by your sides. We're gonna come into stalk pose, right knee into the chest, squeeze in. Garudasana. Wrap the right leg over the left. Take your time as you find your balance. Know that you can use the support of the earth for that foot. You might wrap it once, you might wrap it twice. Arms come wide, opposite arm. So left arm over the top, hold your shoulders. Maybe the backs of the hands, maybe the fronts of the palms touch. Just like before, in your eagle, Think about pulling your knees away from one another. Just like before we did in our chair, I mean. Pull the knees away from one another. Create that traction in your hips. You can stay tall. You can nest your eagle down low if that feels good. Good, as you breathe in, we're gonna come back up into standing. Stalk pose, knee into chest. Take that leg out long. Warrior three. Transfer the weight. Just like before, bend that knee. See if you can squeeze the knee to the outside of the left leg. Whoop, find your balance, have a play. Good, hands to the mat. Right foot steps back, followed by left downward facing. Take a pedal. 
Well done, that was a lot. Take a moment. So this practice of yoga creates this union. It's a balance, creating this harmony between our body, between our mind, between our breath. And it's a practice. And some days we have more balance than others just like in our everyday life. Sometimes we feel like everything is in balance and everything is going our way, nothing can shake us. And then other days, it's just a gentle blow of the breeze and it might knock us over. But this practice of balance is knowing that it's not about perfection. We're never 100% in balance, we're never always in balance. It's about knowing that when we step outside of this equilibrium, we know how to bring ourselves back in. We know what we need to do to align ourselves better. Finding balance is also a practice of being compassionate and kind to yourself and knowing that some days you might need a little more love than other days. Let's take a big breath in together. A nice long breath out and we're going to move through that all again on the other side. So from wherever you are, come into your downward facing dog. And then as you next breathe in, we're going to take left foot to the sky. Knee to chest, squeeze in, find that compression strength as you shift forwards. Inhale back. Exhale, knee to chest, squeeze in and compress. One more, take it back. Squeeze it in, shift. Beautiful, take the leg back behind you. Twisted dog, stack open your hips, bend your top knee, maybe you stay. Maybe you wild thing as you pivot on the ball of the bottom foot. We're playing with keeping the right leg straight, bending the left knee as we press the hips to the sky. Good, come back into center. Left knee extends back behind. Three-legged dog. Ball and triangle, we're gonna squeeze the left knee over to the right side, right hand to the sky. From your fallen triangle shape, we're bending into that bottom knee. We're gonna bring it all the way down to begin. Try to bring the knee as close as you can up towards your wrist. Press down firmly into that right foot. Press into your left hand. Right foot sweeps to the sky. So we're crossing it in front of that thigh. Knee to elbow, foot to sky. Knee to elbow, foot to sky. Three, whew, two, and one. Beautiful. Come down to a seat. Roll now to your right. Right forearm to the mat. Left foot steps over the top. So we're pressing that top hip away from us. We're anchoring down firmly into this right shoulder. So rather than kind of just slouching down here, we want to be active. Press up and out of the right shoulder. Back toes pull up towards the face. This top hand can anchor down here as well. Little pulses, five. Lift and lower, four. Three. Two. Nearly there. One, last one, lift it up and hold, five. Lift, 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 four, hello adductors, hello inner thigh. Three, two, one, well done. We're gonna bend that bottom knee, press ourselves up. Right hand catches that front knee, left hand to the sky. Start to twist and rotate to begin, look to the top fingers, and then sink forwards over your legs. Feel the weight in that front foot. Good, come back into center, counter twist to your right, Plant the hands and then pivot. So pyramid pose again, here we are. Left foot is forwards. If you need to take a little step towards the back of the mat, do. Start with a little rock, backwards and forwards. Standing split, right foot to the sky. Good, now from here we're taking our pistol squats. Option to start with Shiva. Knee to the knee as you just bend and extend. Option two, compress the knee into the chest. Start to bend into that left knee a little more. Lift and extend. 
or option to take the full shebang. Right knee pulls into chest, compress, lift it high, bend deeply into the left knee and then shoot the right leg forwards. No, you can have your hands on your blocks. You can even have that left foot on a block to give yourself more height. This movement depends greatly upon your anatomy, the length of your limbs. So if you can help yourself out, do so. Good, last one. Come into your pistol squat, however you need to get there. Right foot is extended in front. It can be resting on the ground. Your hands can be on the ground or blocks. Maybe you're hovering. Three, two, one. Low lunge to the front. Foot comes down followed by the knee. Sink forwards. Rise up high lunge. Skandasana back of the mat. Have a play with your Skandasana. If you would like to take it a little bit deeper, we're gonna come all the way down to a seat. You can use your hands if you need to. We're gonna lower that left knee in front of us. And then we're gonna fold over that extended leg. Inhale, rise up. If this isn't for you, stick with the variation of Skandasana that is for you. Lower over. Let's go one more each side. Last one. Beautiful, press back up. Front of the mat, arrowhead. Arms along the side of the body to begin. Set the strength of that front leg. Anchor into the foot. Hands reach forwards, bend deeply into that front knee, bring it over the toes. Breathe in as you press back, arrowhead. Hands can be on the mat or they fly. Back forwards, sink deep, arrowhead. Beautiful, couple more. Last one. Good, back into your pyramid shape. Frame your front foot, slide that front leg back a little bit so you can come into your standing split. This time, like before, we're gonna bend that top knee, cross it over so that the thighs come to touch and you wanna pull the right knee as far as you can over to the left side. Take it back long. Let's go three, two, and one. Good. Feet come to touch. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Rise all the way up. Stalk pose. Left knee into the chest, stand tall. Extend through that front leg. Warrior three. Back we go, fly the leg. Good, find your balance. Your hands can stay outstretched, they can come to the mat. We're gonna tap that leg again. Three two and one good i think i just went a little rogue we're going to come back up eagle pose forgot it left knee crosses over the right arms come wide right arm crosses over left pick the option that's going to work for you in this moment on this side no it might be different to the other and that's okay laser your focus think about pulling your knees apart Pull them away from one another. Good, hold. You can sink, you can stay tall. Three, two, and one, good. Knee back into chest and release. Oof. Well done. Move the hips from side to side. Pedal out through the ankles. We're gonna move through a vinyasa here together. Breathe in, hands overhead. Exhale, take a swan dive. Halfway lift. Plant your hands, find your plank, take a breath, lower all the way to the belly. <laughs> Inhale into cobra, press into the hands, lift the chest. Exhale, lower down. Tuck your toes under, you can press back through child's pose or straight back into your high plank to your downward facing. Oof, end of the practice. First vinyasa of the practice. Not quite the end of the practice, we're nearly there. From your downward facing, we're gonna to come to meet at the top of the mat. Find a halfway lift, fold forwards, rise all the way up to standing. Now that we have prepped, now that we are ready, 
we're gonna have a play with our dragon squats. So we're gonna start on the right side. So taking the weight into the right foot. Think about spreading the toes wide. Think about pulling the ball of the foot back towards the heel of the foot. So you kind of create that little bit of traction, that little bit of lift of the heel and it can really help with balance. We're gonna start with stalk pose, knee into chest. You can bring your arms out to help with balance. Leg comes forwards and then we're gonna send it out to the side. So like we've been doing throughout the class, sweep it back behind you so you're in your warrior three shape. Now bend the back knee, bring the thighs to touch. See if you can sweep that knee as far out to the right side as you can. From there, we start to bend into the bottom knee. If you wanna bring your hands down for support, you can, so we can start to straighten through that leg. End goal is to have the leg out in front. Generally no hands, but you can play with catching that leg. And then from there, we wanna to try to stand back up. You can use hands or not, press back into that right leg. Oof. Come back to where you started. Well done and release. Let's have a play on the other side. Left foot anchors down, spread the toes, pull the ball and the heel together, create that traction. Stalk both to begin, arms wide. You can straighten the leg or you can keep the knee bent. With control though, take the leg out to the side and behind you. Warrior three, find your balance. Then bend the right knee. Cross the legs over, feel the thighs touch. Sink into your bottom knee. And then see if you can extend that leg out to the side. Coming down into, towards your dragon. Woo and then press back up, Woof. come back to where you started. So things to play with, you can stand onto your block and that's just gonna create some more space for you to straighten that leg as you sweep around the corner there. So if you've got longer legs, that can be a helpful drill. If you're feeling like you need to strengthen up more through the glutes for the ascending part of the movement for when you're coming back up. We can just play with curtsy squat, squats. So standing on a block, taking the other leg behind, we're gonna bend, bring that knee down, stand back up. You can take your little dab shape to add a little more load. Elbow to the ground, hand to the sky. Press back up. A couple of those on each side can be helpful to strengthen the glutes. And there you have it. There's your dragon. So you can pause the video here. You can play around with moving through that dragon pattern. You can break it down and piece it out. Uh, play around in the areas that you're stuck on perhaps. If you're cooked like I am, this is hot yoga, outdoors in the sun. We're gonna come down to a seat and we're gonna take a hero's pose. Just stretch out through the fronts of the quads. So full hero, we bend both knees and start to recline backwards. You can stay on your forearms, you could place your block underneath your lower back for support. Alternatively to that, if it doesn't feel fantastic on your knees, you can play with just taking one leg at a time. And then if that's still too much on the knees, because it can be a bit of pressure on the knees, you can come down to your back and just take a constructive rest where we bring the feet wider than the mat and let the knees fall together in the center. So just pick your option. If you're taking the single legged variation, I'll give you a halfway point when it's time to switch over. Just starting to feel your body recalibrate. Starting to feel your breath slow as your heart rhythm slows as well. 
if you are on the single leg variation, just slowly moving towards the other side. Staying in whichever option you've chosen. Being with the sensations that you're feeling right now. Rumi, a famous poet. says that life is a balance between holding on and letting go. Balance is this knowing when it's time to grip, to be resilient, to push through. But then the knowing of when it's time to surrender, to let go to soften and we need both neither is superior to the other they're like yin yang just finding your last couple of breaths in your hero's pose When you're ready, start to guide yourself out of the shape. And then we're all going to come down to our back. Find that constructive rest position. Feet wide, knees together, arms out, palms to the ceiling. And then just take a windscreen wipe of your knees, rocking them right to left, left to right. And then come back into centre, drawing both knees into your chest. Wrap your hands around your shins and then as you inhale, peel your head, neck and shoulders from your mat like you want to kiss your knees. And then exhale, lower down. Take two more, inhale, peel up into a little ball. Exhale, lower down, last one. Good. And then lowering down, keep the right knee to your chest, lengthen your left leg along the mat. Take a shimmy of your hips over to the right side and then find your twist to the left. Right arm extends long. If your neck's happy to do so, take the gaze towards those right fingers. Allow yourself to start to surrender here. Feel gravity as it pieces your spine apart. And on your next breath in, we'll come back into center. And then just switching sides. Left knee into the chest, right leg is long. This time we're going to shimmy the hips to the left before we roll to the right. Left arm extends wide. You can look towards those fingers. Just soften. Last breath in your twist. And then when you're ready, come back into center. And then just rearrange, do whatever you need to do here. Find any last little shapes, any movements before you bring yourself into your Shavasana shape. And just know that your Shavasana in this moment and on this day can look however you need it to look which means maybe you're on your back, but maybe you're on your belly, maybe you're on your side. Maybe you'd prefer to sit upright and lean against a wall. What's important here though, as tempting as it may be, especially if you're practicing at home, is to skip out this final part of the practice. But Shavasana really is where the magic occurs. 
It's where we recalibrate. It's that moment where our body is able to digest all that it's done. So give yourself this gift of stillness. Start to empty your body, allow it to become weightless. Allow your mind to begin to soften. Balance. is this dance between holding on and letting go. And falling out of balance isn't what matters. What matters is how we deal with that moment and how we find our way back to our center. Each and every day, again and again. That is the practice. The practice is trusting that you can and that you will find your way back. Shavasana. Know that you can stay in your Shavasana for as long as you choose. If you're ready to start to bring your awareness back. Let your attention be with the sounds that you can hear around you. Sensations that you can feel in your body. When you're ready to invite a deeper breath back into your being, introduce some small movements across your fingers and your toes, rolling through your wrists and your ankles. And when you're ready to move, we're going to guide the arms overhead, take a great big delicious full body stretch and then just roll yourself to one side. And just pause, just be in this little pocket of stillness as collectively we prepare to move with our practice, to take it with us off of our mat and out into our world, finding that sense of kindness, love and compassion for yourself as you balance the tightrope of life as you wear all of the hats that you have to wear each and every day, as you juggle all of the plates. Know that balance is a practice and it's something that we can find for ourselves each and every day. And it's also something that we might lose each and every day and that's okay. It's not about being perfect. It's just about knowing that we can find our way back. We 
When you're ready, finding a comfortable seat, keeping your eyes heavy as you bring your hands into your heart space. And we'll sit up really nice and tall together. Sitting bones are anchoring to the earth. Our sternum pushes to the thumb so that we can shine our bright, beautiful light from within. And bowing our heads together here, offering respect and gratitude to ourselves, to one another and to the practice. And together we say, Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me uh, on my first ever YouTube video. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um, please comment. Um, feedback is so good, good or bad. Um, yeah, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to endeavor to do this regularly. Um, yeah, so please like, share, follow, all those things that you're supposed to do on YouTube. <laughs> I'll get used to this. I'll get used to saying that, I'm sure. Big love. Um, means a lot that you've watched this, so thank you. Bye. See you soon.